Bless them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make their lives better at the end of this service. And Father, I pray for your glory to shine upon each and every one of us. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, I'm going to share the word of God briefly with you, Ozalon, and our friends all over the world. We are going to read again just the last part of this verse. It says, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. This is the main scripture of the day. I want us to understand what God is saying to the churches today. And this is the cry that God has in my, in my opinion. God has got something to say to each and every one of us. Number one, let us interact with the book of Timothy. The book of Timothy was written, it was a letter or an epistle that was written to this young man called Timothy by the man of God called Paul. You know Paul very well. He was Saul in the beginning and on his way to Damascus, he met Jesus. And Jesus translated his life, transformed his life. From there, his life was never the same again. And I want to say the following today. May we become like this young man at the end of this session. Uh, let us look at who this Timothy is. Timothy is the son of a certain wonderful woman who was so powerful in the ministry. And her name was called Eunice. Eunice was a born again child of God. She was a Jew by distance, and her husband was not a Jew. Her husband was a Greek, which means he used to live in Ephesus. Remember, the Greeks were one and the same people with the Romans during this time because the Romans had uh, colonized the whole of the world by then. Thank God that, I mean, the gospel found people like them and translated people like them into Christianity. Number two, his name means favor or the favored one by God. Number three, this young man was very young living in a very corrupt um, uh, city called Ephesus. This city was, I mean, very close to Lystra and Debe. And these two cities were very corrupt in such a way that people had gone to a point of competing against their sinnings. They would, I mean, chronologically read the ancestors in their surnames. Apart from that, these people would even go to a point of talking, I mean, fables, which means they would talk stories which were never founded. So when this man, Paul, came or wrote this letter to this young man, Timothy, he was actually imploring him to go and preach the sound gospel of Jesus Christ. The sound gospel that will change the lives of people in a foreign country. Remember, Saul was a Jew who grew up staying with the Greeks. But I mean, uh, when, he, when he was translated, he went back to his roots. He went back to being a Jew amongst the Jews. And this is the man who translated the Bible in a very prolific manner, just like how we caught him today. And I want to say this today, that Paul... It's a standard that we need to live by. Paul is a man that we can look up to and wish to become Christians who will change the world for good. Number one, I want us to understand the way that we have read. The book of Timothy was written by Paul. It was during his second mission into Asia Minor. Asia Minor, we're talking about these small countries right on top of Israel, just like Syria, where Damascus is found. That is where uh, Paul met Jesus as he was going to persecute the people of God in Damascus. Now, when Paul had translated, he discovered something in God. He discovered that God can use any person. That's the reason why he went with this young man. The first time he met I mean, uh, Timothy, it was in the book of Acts chapter number 16, verses 1, 2, and 3, when he explained that I mean, this young man was born of Eunice and this Greek man. Apart from that, this young man fell in love with the gospel of Paul. 
during that time and he followed him. Unfortunately, he had to leave him during his first mission to preach the word of God outside. When he came back, Paul found him again. Then he encouraged him in the Lord and he became one of his uh, disciples. Then this young man, um, Timothy, was working very closely to this wonderful man of God. Let us go back to the scripture so that we can conclude. We are learning about the book of Timothy. In the book of Timothy chapter number 4, Paul is saying to this young man, I want you to live a life that will never be blamed by any person. I want you to be an, ex an example to people. I want you to be a person who can change the lives of other people. I want you to be a person who can be followed. And that is where I captured the main scripture of the day. And now I'm coming with a topic that says, become a followable saint. Become a followable Christian that will please God. Remember, we spoke about pleasing God during the course of the week. And now I want us to take it further and say, there is a very big mission that God has called you for. Just like this young man, Paul, uh, this young man, Timothy rather, this man was very, very, very commendable. The people you worked with commended him to work with Paul. They, they kept on saying to Paul, this young man is very good. He's helpful to the church. He's helpful to the ministry. So in other words, people were following him closely. People were even, you know, uh, uh, getting hurt by this young man at a very young age. That's the reason why Paul went to a point of saying, I want you to become an example to other people. He mentioned a lot of things there. He mentioned things that I'm going to dwell on today. Number one, uh, Paul is saying to him, I want you to live a life that will never be blamed by any person. Be blameless. Become a young person who is full of the word of God. Become a young person who understands what he or, or, or what he is doing, more especially in the last of the last day. During, um, during this time, the church of God was seriously under attack. Now, Paul is saying, I want you to be an example to believers. This is where the mistake is in the church today. People want to be examples to the world before they become, a, what is this, a, a, a examples to the people that they are working with. Become an example to the people you are working with. Become an example to the people that you serve daily. Even those ones who serve with daily. If you are serving in the ministry, be a followable child of God. And I want to say the following. Paul said to this young man, Timothy, he said, I want you to become a very wonderful believer. I want you to become a very wonderful example. What is an example? An example is something that we can benchmark our standards on. It's something that we can look up to and we go to a point of saying, I want to be like this person. When you look at an example, you want to understand even more. Uh, at school, when the teachers give you examples in physical sciences, in mathematics and biology, they want you to understand that you can follow this and you can apply it in life. You can use it in life and you can grow in life. So I want you to understand today as a child of God. That you are going to be a wonderful believer, the person who takes the gospel of Jesus without shame, the person who can be commendable to the world, the person that we can send out to other countries and preach the gospel, the person who can stand and represent Christ, the person who can become an ambassador of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul is saying to, um, to us today, let us become wonderful examples to the believers. And when we become wonderful examples of believers, it will be simple for us to preach the gospel to the people outside. Now, before we become, before we take all these things, let us understand what is happening with our becoming good ambassadors of Christ and becoming good examples of the, of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are things that we need to do first and foremost. Number one, this young man, Timothy, was available. If you are available, you make room for God to use you. Number two, 
He was ready to preach the gospel wherever he went. He was ready to die for the gospel. Number three, this young man had time, had time to, to do, to serve in the ministry. This young man, number four, was even having a cause that he could die for. Just like our late president, our former, our former president Mandela, he said, this is the cause that I'm ready to die for. A child of God must be ready to die for something, must be ready to live for something, must be ready to work for something else. You, you need to be a person who is there to work for other people. You need to stand for what you believe. You need to learn more about what you believe in. Number five, you need to seek knowledge in whatever you're going to do. This young man stayed under the leadership of Paul. And under the leadership of Paul, he learned to love people. He learned to have faith in God. He, had, I mean, he learned to be, um, to be pure in saving the people of God. And based on those things, this young man became a very followable leader. How many of us are followable today? I mean, people who are followable, they have got integrity to protect. If they are married to this woman, they stay with this woman forever. If they are married to this man, they stay with this man forever. When they make uh, promises, they fulfill their promises because... They stand by their weight. People who are followable don't keep on changing like chameleons. People who are followable are people who, st who stand on the word of God and teach the word of God without diluting it. People who are followable are the people who always want Jesus to be seen based on their lives. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to take the front seat. They want to be behind the scenes, but Jesus be seen by their lives. So today I am coming with a message that says, become a followable Christian. Are you a followable Christian? Am I a followable Christian? Can people live to follow me? Can people dedicate their lives just like how they did with Jesus to follow him? Can people follow us in the last days? Can people follow us in our churches today? This is the message that I'm bringing. I want us to answer these questions individually in our private spaces. I want you to understand that God is crying for people not those ones who are going to stand in front of the pulpit or on the stage and preach. Not people who are going to be leaders only. Not people who are crying to be in front. Not people who are crying to be on the programs. But people who are examples. People who can be followable. People of integrity. People who are going to tell the world that this is how Jesus lives. Even if you don't know who, who Jesus is, look at my life and you'll see Jesus. And this is the type of gospel that I want us to preach in the last days. I want to implore my fellow pastors, wherever we are, in whatever we do, let people see the type of Christ we are saving. Let people know God through our lives. Let people see Jesus through our lives. We need to be examples just like this young man, Timothy. And Paul said to him, do not despise your age. There are some people who are set back in their lives because of age. Some of them are saying, I cannot do anything, I'm a woman. Some of them are saying, I am still very young. Some of them are looking at their backgrounds and look at where they come from. Some of them are coming from very, very poor backgrounds, just like mine. But I want to tell you today that God is not interested in all those reasons not to serve him. God is interested in looking beyond those reasons and rise above the standard the devil has set. And you become, and I become, we become examples to the believers in faith. We need to preach to the people through our conduct. We, we need to preach to the people through our faith in God. Now, Paul, the last part of the, um, of the verse, he says, become an example in, in weight. What is in weight? Once we say in weight, we are actually saying, whatever you say, you need to maintain it. Whatever you say must always define who you are, must always define the type of God you are believing in, must always tell people what you have believed in, what you have on the inside of you. He says, become a true ambassador, a true example, a true Christian, a followable Christian in way, which means our words that we are saying to the people, our words that we are telling to the people, our words that we are preaching about to the people, our words that we are reading and saying, even praying about, should show the world Jesus. If the world does not see Jesus through us, we have got a problem. Number two, 
uh, Paul is saying to this young man, become a very true ambassador of the gospel of Jesus Christ in faith, which means we need to have the spirit or actions that will always make God happy. We cannot please God if our actions are not showing faith in God. We need to speak life to the people who are seeing death. We need to speak positivity when people, when people are negatively charged. We need to speak life to the people who have been discouraged by the things of this life. We need to speak life to the people who are about to divorce. And when they look at us, they must see faith in God. When we pray to them, when we pray for them, when we pray with them, and when we say some words in their presence, we need to say them in faith. If you don't talk faith, you are making a mistake because you are not followable. People will follow you based on what you say, but what you say through seeing Christ. If they don't see Christ in what you are saying, people will not follow you. Apart from that, this man is saying, People must look at you in love. They must see love in you, which means they must see the impartation of God. Love is God because God is love, which means we cannot separate the people who serve God to serve with love. We cannot say they, they, they must just serve God in speech, on the pulpits, and when they're at church, when they're at home, they don't behave like that. You need to love other people. You have got some faces of love. You need to love people as you love yourself. You need to love people as your brothers. But apart from that, you need to love people as your enemies. And when God comes to loving people, becoming a followable disciple of Jesus in loving people, you need to love them, feed them, and pray for them. Even clothe them. That is what Jesus used to say. If you love people, clothe them. If you love people, feed them. That is what love is. People must see this type of love in us. People must follow, must come to a point of saying, I want to be like I mean, Joseph Matebola because Matebola has got love. If you don't love the people of God, be, don't become a servant of God. If you don't love the people of God, do not go and preach in front of the people because you cannot preach to the people that you don't love. And I'm saying this very sternly today that we need to be people full of love for other people. You cannot say, I love myself and I don't love other people. The reason why you love yourself is because there is somebody who appreciates you. So allow those people to learn from you. Apart from that, the, 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 the last one. Paul is saying to this young man, become an example in what we don't want to see today, in purity. A lot of people are not pure. A lot of people's speech is very vile. A lot of people's mentality, what they think when they are alone. Remember, when you talk about purity, we also go beyond what we see when you are alone in your private space, when you are alone in your room, when you are alone driving in the car. What you do beyond what people see, that is going to mark your purity. How many people are pure today? How many people are ready to be pure today? How many people are living a life that can be followed by young people? by adults alike. How many people are pure in their speech? How many people are pure in their sight? How we look at people, how we appreciate other people, how we become the type of examples in purity. We need to be very, very, very aware of that. And we need to be examples. Paul is saying to this young man, you are still young, but be pure. Now, when we talk about purity, we talk about the product that comes after you would have mixed righteousness and being blameless. Once you are, you are blameless, which means you are not having anything that people can despise you based on. Number two, you have got righteousness in you. Righteousness in, in, in us means, okay, it's a gift. We need to understand that one. Righteousness is a gift. And when righteousness is upon us, it makes us to have a good standing with God. When we talk, when we pray, when we preach, when we do whatever in ministry, showing our servitude to the people and to God, God hears what we say because righteousness goes straight back to God. It doesn't go to people, it goes straight back to God and it doesn't make a lot of noise. Righteousness and being blameless do not make noise because they talk in purity. In purity, that is where you can be humble. 
That is where you can love other people just like you love yourself. That is where you are going to I mean, show Christ beyond what you say, but based on what you live and what you think about. A lot of people are pure in front of other people. A lot of pastors are pure. As, as pastors, we preach to people and people see this pure man, this humble man, this wonderful man, but behind our minds must be renewed. That's the reason why Paul, in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he said, be ye renewed by the renewal of your mind. Because the biggest problem in purity is in the mind. If you are not renewed in the mind, you can be pure based on what people look at from a distance. But when God looks at you, he might not see purity because he looks into your mind. Is your mind renewed? As a man of God, are you not focusing on the monetary gain only? As a man of God, are you not focusing on I mean, abusing other people. As a servant of God, as a Christian, as an, as an elder church, as a deacon, as a person who's in leadership, are you not focusing on gains, just like money or being closer to the pastor? Some of us, because we are not pure, we don't go to church when the pastor is not there. We don't go to church during the course of the week. We only attend church on Sunday morning. People who attend church, church on Sunday morning, I always liken them to an orphan. A person who only thinks of God when it's Sunday morning, but during the course of the week, the person lives haphazardly, lives, I mean, by the streets of sinful nature, lives by the corridors of, uh, of impurity. But today, Paul is calling us back to ourselves, back to our normal, I mean, uh, 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 emotions, back to our normal senses. He's saying, be ye an example and do not allow people to despise you based on who you are, based on where you come from, based on what you are saying. A lot of people will judge you nowadays when you are preaching based on the command of English that you pronounce, um, that you say, when, uh, how you read, how you say things out when you are preaching or when you are speaking. But it is not based on the English. It's not based on the suits we are, we are putting on. It's not based on the perfumes we are wearing. It's not based on the jewelry and the cars that we drive, even the houses that we stay in. It is based on are you followable? Can people follow you? Can people say, I want to be like Joe Matebola? Can people say, I want to grow up and become a better person like Joe Matebola? This is how I want to close this message today. Remember, I am saying, become a followable Christian. Become a followable leader. Become a followable pastor. You cannot be a pastor if you still have people blaming you. You cannot be a pastor if people know your secrets and you don't repent before God. People will not follow you. People will not, I mean, listen to your songs as a, as a worshiper at church if you are not an example. We need the church members. We need the sons and daughters in the ministers. We need pastors. We need committee members. We need other pastors in the church. We need evangelists and prophets who are going to be followable, who are going to be examples for other people to follow. Now, I close it like this. Our prime purpose of coming to this life is to know what God has called us for. And once God know, I mean, uh, gives you something that you know that he has called you for, work on it. When you work on it, produce the best for other people to step on you so that they can become better also. Do not be a person who comes to this life, who comes to this life, live, eat, die and be buried, then get, get forgotten. You need to be a person who knows the primary purpose of coming to this life, work on it, give it to other people, let them run with it, let them become better than you. A, a, the best, I mean, apostle will always want people who are coming after him to become better than him, 10 times better than him. The best pastor will always groom other pastors who are going to become 10 times better than him. Just like Jesus. Jesus, I mean, a, a, a produced the best people, the best Peter, the best, I mean, a, a, a Paul today, the best Timothy, and is producing the best you based on this message. You cannot go back home the same person. You cannot close this session the very same person. You cannot die the very same person. The person. Thank God that you did not die before you listen to this message. Because God has got a very special message for us. The message is become a followable Christian. Become a followable pastor. Put anything, put any title that you, you are in. If you are a medical doctor, become the best doctor so that when you are no longer, 
alive, people can follow and trace who you are and who you were. People can know what you stood for. People can know the way that you used to speak and how you helped other people. I want to say thank you so much for watching. May God bless you. But above all these things, I want us, more especially as children of God, Paul says, become examples to the believers. The church of God should know that, I mean, there are people that we can run to when we've got problems. The church of God should know that there are people who stand for us. Even those ones who are praying for us in, in, in private, those ones who will never talk to us about anything, but they report us to God. Are you a followable child of God? If not, this message is for you and I. It's for us. Let us go and fix ourselves. Jesus is coming. We cannot continue to become I mean, uh, uh, people who are not followable and expect new results. If we want new results in the things of God, let us do what the word of God is saying. Let us be examples in so many things, in faith, in purity, in love, in spirit, in weight. Let us become people who will always please God. I thank you for watching. You are wonderful people and may God bless you. See you next time.